Here at the PBA Players Championship, the semifinals are a tale of haves and a have-not. Three season champs, all major title winners, and just one guy who's yet to win on the national stage. Yeah! Hard-throwing Kevin McCune dropped likely player of the year EJ Tackett in the quarters. Will his good luck continue as he goes up against five-time major winner Anthony Simonson? On the other side of the bracket, future Hall of Famer Bill O'Neill meets the talented lefty Jacob Buttruff, each trying to add another major to the resume. It's the final major of the season, the PBA Players' Championship semifinals next here on FS1. Legendary Bolero, North Brunswick here in New Jersey. We welcome you to the BBA Players Championship presented by Snickers. Semifinals today, title showdown tomorrow on Fox. We start with the bracket destroyer at this event, Anthony Simonson. He takes on third generation pro Kevin McCune. And then Bill O'Neill seeks his first title in three years as he meets two seed Jacob Buttruff. Here are the odds to win the title provided by Fox Bet. Simo, your favorite, followed by the lone lefty in our final four, Jacob Buttruff. Happy Mother's Day weekend to you. Glad you're with us here, Rob Stone. The Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson. Where have you been? I've been busy. I've had Man, things. I've missed we, you. We have missed you. I've missed your oh blue. God, you look good so in much. blue today, Thank Randy you, Peterson. Welcome back. All right, let's talk bowling, my friend. And if not for the epic five win, two major winning season by EJ Tackett, Anthony Simonson really would be your no-brainer PBA Player of the Year. The numbers he has put up consistently staggering. Absolutely. I mean, he is the strongest 12 seed in the history of history. What a season for Anthony Simonson. He's made every major telecast, five of them. That's a PBA record. After 48 games of qualifying, he had to bowl another game. He tied Jason Belmonte. They went to a roll off. Simonson wins just to get to this point. Simonson. He might be the 12th seed, Rob, but I think he's the favorite coming into this weekend. And look what he's done at the majors this season already. Fourth at the Open, defended his USBC Masters crown, third at the World Championship, and at worst, a fourth place finish here at the PBA Players Championship. But he's going to open up against a two-sport flamethrower, right? Kevin McCune excelled at baseball, both high school and at the collegiate level. But this young man has PBA DNA coursing through his veins. Yeah, that's some lineage, that family, the McCunes. And uh, I'll tell you what, I used to compete against his father, Eugene, back in the day. But one of the biggest upsets, if not the biggest upset of the tournament, happened last weekend when Kevin took down the number one player in 2023, EJ Tackett. You know, uh, Kevin's recorded some staggering numbers on strike track with his ball speed. Uh, he sure is unique and fun to watch. But today, he's going to be tested like never before in his young career. His dad, Eugene, is here, nicknamed the Rocket. His son, Nuke. Nuke. I Nuke. love it. Not a bad nickname. Here are your Fox bet odds for our opening semifinal and Simonson the favorite. Let's hear from our two opening semifinalists standing by lane side with the queen, Kimberly Pressler. Huge monumental season for you so far. 11 top five finishes. I mean, that stat is absolutely crazy to even say. Did you think that your season was going to turn out the way that it has so far? Uh, absolutely not. I don't think uh, that's something anybody could predict. Uh, we've had a really good year so far, and we're hoping we can continue it with the win today. Why so successful? Uh, you know, I just think uh, mentally getting a little bit better. Obviously not 100% uh, there, as some of the guys know. But, uh, you know, mentally getting stronger, a little bit of practice uh, at the beginning of the year is clearly paying off. Good luck to you today. Thanks. And Kevin, big win to get here. You beat EJ, but uh, it might be bigger than that because you have a chance to do something that no one else has ever done before. Three generations of winning a PBA Tour title. Your grandfather, your dad, Eugene, who is here, and then you. Have you given that thought? Uh, that's the whole reason I'm out here. I mean, we'd be the only three generation for 70, 80 years probably. But so it would be really hard to beat. Well, in order to make that happen, though, you've got to go through the titan that is Anthony Simonson. So what's your strategy for that? I'm going to hit the pocket, and whoever strikes more is going to win. Good luck to you. 
Find that pocket, find those strikes. He is not intimidated at all and hasn't been through the course of this player's championship as well. Again, this is a race to two points. Winner of game one earns a point. Winner of game two, if it's the same, has won and moved on to tomorrow's final. If not, we would have a third game. And if tied after those two games, or rather, we would have that roll off. And there is Eugene McCune taken in this match, set to watch his son. Eugene known for that fireballer style, but, mm -hmm. but he could do everything. I mean, he could slow hook it. He could play all over the lane. Eugene's wife, Kevin's mom, Christine, there in attendance as well. Here's Kevin McHugh. Go oh, ahead, Messenger! To fire us up here in the first. <laughs> Don't blink. You ever seen the head thing come right? across that fast? That was in slow motion, people. <laughs> Here is your 12 seed, the bracket destroyer from Vegas, Anthony Simonson. Tenth year on the tour, 12 titles. Five of them have been majors. He's looking for his sixth. So here's how Anthony Simonson got here. First round last Saturday, took on five seed Chris Vi. Yeah, it was a great match. It came down to the 10th frame, and Anthony Simonson took care of him in the 10th frame, 237-231, and then took on Thomas Keiko. We're still having trouble with Thomas's last name. It seems to be mispronounced all the time. And that went uh, to a roll-off, which Simonson won 40-38. to Second shot, Simonson left lane, another strike. Nothing but strikes so far here at Bolero North Brunswick. Semi-final Saturday here at the Players. Same ball for Simonson on both lanes to start. Idle Cosmos, but not the case for young Kevin McCune. Purple Hammer on the right lane and Innovator Solid on the left. Not a whole lot of hook to that Purple Hammer. destroys the rack again. Hang on, hang on, Rob. Uh, when was the last time you saw a strike ball thrown at 20, 22 miles an hour? 468 on the RPM. At that speed. That thing is in a hurry to get anywhere. <laughs> uh, like I said, fun to watch. I was watching him in warm-ups, and I saw pins doing somersaults that I'd never yeah. seen before. Yeah, they get airborne. There's a tug. Left the target. Look at the break point. Down lane right there. And even if, even though it's a longer pattern, not enough to hold this one online. Spare shooting is his strength, as he says. His first opportunity here. 3-6-10 dropped. Take a look at our oil patterns. That's plural. Left lane is the Dick Weber 45. Right lane, the Don Carter 39. And it, there's a couple of different ways to play the pattern. We can see that immediately in this match, or these patterns, I should say. You've got urethane going down the lane by Kevin McCune on the right lane. Simonson is using reactive resin. is a little further left. He's actually playing the longer pattern straighter. Multiple angles on these two patterns. Urethane, reactive resin, a lot of options. Both Simonson and McCune open up with a double, and then in the third, they have to convert a spare. This will be a single pin pickup for Simonson. You can see the oil pattern shadows on the lanes. It's pretty cool. You can definitely see the difference in lane. Take a look down lane right there. Looks like the New York City skyline is right? just to the northeast of us. Rumor has it uh, you were at a ball game yesterday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There it's we a go. Yankee Stadium, there's what you're talking about. Yeah. So there's like the Chrysler building on the right, the Empire State building on the left. Yep. Looking for a sixth career major title. Won the Masters earlier this year in Allen Park, Michigan, one of our favorite places. Little 
noise in the crowd. Simonson walks it back. The numbers from Simonson this year, right, Randy? Second on average, second on points, second on earnings, second in wins. All behind EJ Tackett. You know, the categories first in championship round appearances. Guy's been top 10 in every event this season, including the doubles that concluded earlier this week in Delaware. Yeah. So. These guys had the week off. All of them took part just south of us in the doubles competition. And Simonson finished third with his partner, Dom Barrett. McCune on the right, blows it up. 22.1, check it out. Spring in the heat. Here's a look at the lineage. Don McCune and his eight titles, Hall of Fame inductee. Eugene, who's here with us, and young Kevin, just 24 years old. This is really his second full year on the tour. There's mom and dad. And here's Kevin, the nine seed. Yeah, I like that one immediately. You can tell by the posture, right? Again, this is a race to two points. So this will be match one of two, and then a roll off should we be tied. There's a look at McCune. Enjoyed talking to him this week. I'd never met yeah. him before. Real nice personality, outgoing. Real engaging, isn't he? Oh boy. And this is gonna be a tough one here for Simonson. You look at the numbers, not all that bad. I mean, just maybe less than an inch right of target. But to leave this is not what you want to see. Open frame in the fifth. A little bit quicker ball speed, perhaps, on that last shot on the right lane, but still. So Simonson down 20 as we enter the sixth. player in PBA history to win a major when he won the Masters back in 2016. Tough line, my Youngest also to win two, three, and four career majors. And five, why not, while we're at it. And should he win tomorrow? Six. According to my history. Simple math. Yeah. Math can be hard sometimes. <laughs> you're, you're telling me. Ooh. To that open frame, Simonson back on the strike train. His fourth strike in six frames, but the lead is 20 for McCune. Anthony Simonson, your 12 seed, but your favorite to win it all, trailing Kevin McCune in match number one here at the Players. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Want to move fast? With same-day mortgage, you can go from application to approval in as fast as one day to get you closing on the home of your dreams in just 10 days. Learn more at rate.com. And by Bolero, the number one place to bowl, party, and play. With over 325 locations nationwide, head to bolero.com today to find a center near you. Kevin McCune, the underdog, but with the lead. And how about this jersey, by the way? Is that, that's Paynes Valley, Branson, Missouri area? Is that a look at the 19th hole? Yeah. I was told there's only 18 holes in golf. Yeah, and then w when you play there, there's a little bonus hole, the 19th, where you can have a lot of fun, maybe settle some bets. <laughs> or pay off some bets. Or pay off at the end of the round. <laughs> Here's McCune, his effort in the sixth. So strike number five for the flamethrower known as Nuke.
Well, Eugene McCune, he sure can bring the heat, but he's no one-trick pony. Let's take a look, excuse me, Kevin. Let's take a look at him hooking it with his thumb in it. Mm. That's pretty impressive, right? But, but wait, there's more. How about a two-handed release he's been working on? You know, I swore I wasn't going to call him Eugene again. Right. And I did. It was inevitable. Oh. You got it out of the way. Another strike for Eugene's son, Kevin. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what, you know what he just dropped, don't you? Uh, no, what? A four-bagger. A four-bagger. Oh, man. A four-bagger. That's disappointing. Take a look at Simonson's career TV record in majors. Simonson's going to make a ball change here on the right lane, Rob. He's going to reality. He's down 40, and reality is barking at him right now. Reality forced this ball change. Whoa! All right, so that... Now, reality is gutter ball. Yeah, and, and it's going to be zero no matter how many pins were knocked over. The ball, once it leaves the playing surface, is dead. I can't remember the last time we had a gutter ball here. Well, typically you don't see it um, unless we're bowling on the Cheeto oil pattern, which forces you to play the extreme right. outside part of the lane. And apparently that's his second gutter in this event. He's going to look at another ball now, a gem. Reality to gem, gutter ball to nine pins. This would be a great time for Kimberly Pressler to interview Anthony Simonson, I would guess. Said nobody ever. Oh, man, he is firing inside. Look how quick he stepped up and fired this off in this race to two. And, well, he may have acquiesced the opening point here. Big move to the inside part of the lane on the left lane, and right now Simonson is just looking for something for game two. Picks that one up, but that is not a happy man right now. Down 52, and watching McCune step up to close out the eight. If you're McCune right now, in control, Randy, how, how do you manage these final three frames? Keep gassing it? Yeah, I think you just keep doing what you're doing, what, what he's doing, and, and stick with the strength of your game. And his strength, obviously, is going direct and throwing it pretty hard. Randy, yeah. Randy, I want to alert you. We have a PAP six-pack alert. If McCune strikes here, bring out the cops. She's going to win 1000 bucks, sponsored by Paps Blue Ribbon of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Please remember to drink responsibly. Six-pack alert. Oh, not even close. And Couldn't even open the first one. And he didn't even get six on that Ooh. shot. He got four. Man. There's no time to socialize today. No. So an open frame for McCune. They're in the foundation frame ninth. He sits down, can max at 237. Simonson up, down 42. I get the feeling Simonson has already moved on to game number two, more or less. Yeah, he's just trying to figure out what to do for game two, and he's gone through several bowling balls on this right lane. He needs to find something with this shot here in the ninth. That ain't gonna get it done. He, he moved deeper with a stronger ball. I mean, I got the other right lane shape stuck in my head. Talking to his ball rep right now, and McCune doing the same thing as well. So McCune has won this one. And now the strategy kicks in as the fight for the second point takes place. So Simonson's still alive, but needs to find something that he's comfortable with. This is a strike ball. It was not a spare attempt. He's going to finish up on the left lane. He made a big move there the last time he was up on the left. And game two, Simonson's going to have to finish on the right lane. So he'll start game two. And I get the sense he cannot wait to start game two. 
So McCune right there, the youngster, has taken the opening point. Again, does not seem to be impacted by nerves in front of crowds on television. Looked at another ball, moved in again on that left lane, but he's probably gonna stay with the blue line. The line that's farther right and a little more direct. I think that's the one he's gonna go with. Yeah. Very great. So Simonson done with a 171. This is the last time we've seen 171 pins drop from Anthony Simonson. No messenger there. And no problem for Kevin McCune. McCune trying to win his first PBA Tour title. He's got to get through Simonson, then he's got to win tomorrow on Fox in our final. One more shot for McCune here in our opening match. This will be his high score here yeah. at the players. The, the numbers have really not been in his favor outside of the fact he's been able to move on. What was it, 200, 208, 193, and we'll see what he gets here. It could be a 227, and it will be. Well, so, you know, mom the and dad enjoyed that one. Yeah, the theme is strategy and execution. Let's see what Simonson can come up with in game two. An absolute blowout in our opening game. McCune with a chance to put down the bracket buster. Anthony Simonson, when our live coverage of the PBA Players Championship returns next here on FS1. Let's flash back to the 2019 PBA Players Championship. Anthony Simonson, your two seed, taking on top seed Jason Belmonte, 232-212. And that's the second, or the sixth career PBA title, and the second career major win for Simonson. Becoming the youngest player in PBA history to win two major titles. Also the youngest player in PBA history to become title eligible for the PBA Hall of Fame. Simonson is now in a must-win situation. Got rolled by 56 pins in our opening match, 227 to 171. So the 12 seed, Simonson, was on kind of a, uh, a search and reconnaissance type mission over the last couple frames, yep. trying to find a comfort zone. Exactly. Nice looking shot right there. He, he kind of clammed up during the commercial break, didn't want to give away what his strategy is, didn't want to impart too much knowledge with Kimberly, and, and I understand that. He's in a bad spot right, right now. This is also kind of his personality at times, so let's find a good place for Simonson, and there it is. Well, his tournament life is on the line. Mm -hmm. He has to somehow calculate and figure out what to do, especially on the right lane, but he also has to execute better. There's Kevin McCune, the flamethrower on the right. Mm, messenger missed the front door, drove right on by. You, you know why the 10 pin was wiggling? Because the pin that went driving by actually created its own vortex, and the 10 pin kind of got trapped in it. I thought about it. I thought about it. Look out. Missed it. He's had problems with that 10 pin, as you can see there. Fifth time he's missed it at this tournament. My, oh my. Just the kind of start Simonson would have drawn up. We talk about it time and time again, how missing spares, especially single pin spares, can come back and haunt you and eventually cost you a championship. Back on the strike train. next shot is going to be very telling for Simo. Third straight year, Simonson has won at least one tour title. Won the Wichita Classic and the Masters. Already this season, looking for another. 
on that right lane. Man. Left turn, Clyde. Mm -hmm. So it's another ball there, the idle Cosmos, but it's got a, a much shinier surface. The Cosmos he's using on the left lane, you can see it's much more dull. And again, two different oil patterns on these two different lanes. Look out. Yeah. What a start. Three for three. It laid there. A little bit of hold on that longer pattern which is exactly what Simonson was looking for. And what a great start here in game number two for Anthony Simonson. A little pressure here for the former Midwest Region Rookie of the Year. And this is a guy who knows how to throw it hard, whether it's on the hard wood or Kimberly on the baseball diamond. that experiences define similarities between baseball and bowling. And for instance, he says baseball is all about using your legs. So it's natural for him to use his to generate all the power that you guys see out there when he throws. He says typically most people think power comes from your upper body instead of pushing with your legs. All that lower body strength he generates on bowling and having played baseball and strike there and all that power has some blowback on his equipment, if you will. Yeah, especially on his shoes and creating that much torque. And he's a big guy, but you can see the wear and tear and, and uh, those rubber soles on the bottom of, of his Dexter shoes. Uh, that's not cheap material. It's very expensive, high grade rubber that's on the bottom of that shoe. And they get a workout underneath uh, young Kevin's feet. Yeah, he says he blows through a lot of shoes, but that Dexter set has lasted the longest. By the way, he does not have a deal with Dexter. Our good friends at Dexter, if they would like to change that, I encourage you to reach out to our good friend Kevin McCune. I bet he'll throw a little Dexter on that good looking jersey for you. I didn't know you were like doing little Jerry Maguire. Oh, I get a cut. I get a cut for everybody. Yeah. Nice. Big miss on the right lane for Simonson, leaving the 3, 6, 9, 10. Not an easy mm -mm. spare to try to convert. Look out. Looks away. Oh, terrible Open shot. frame again. Uh. He's out of sorts, yeah. and it shows. Tonight, a little showcase of some of Major League Baseball's biggest stars, Manny Machado and the Padres, Mookie Betts, one of the best bowlers on the Diamond and the Dodgers, or it's the Astros. Battle Tim Anderson and the White Sox, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on Fox. And I'm sorry to all the great baseball fans out there. Randy and Rosarena will not be playing on Fox or FS1 today. The great Tampa Bay Rays outfielder. So good. He's so good. America's team, Tampa Bay Rays. Anthony Simonson back on the strike train there after that open frame in the fifth. And he walks away and walks right past his ball reps. He is about, what do you say, Randy, 20 yards away from the lanes right now? Uh, yeah, a good 20. Yeah, we're looking at him right now in front of our booth. Just out of sorts mentally. He's, just, it, he's frustrated, and it's forcing him into making bad shots. The lead has been reduced to five. McCune goes down on a knee. Didn't like that one. Another miss left on that right lane, McCune. Fortunate just to leave the 6'10. There's Anthony. Way offset. A lot going on in that in that mind. Good pick up there by McCune. Remember, missed that single pin conversion in the first frame. Able to convert that one here in the fifth. So three pin match here again. McCune. If he earns this point, he moves on to tomorrow's final live on Fox. Simonson must rally, must get the win here to force a roll off. That Ben Davis? Yeah, Ben Davis. Flexing right there, MMA commentary. He's throwing some elbows. Is he using elbows on us? He is. Man, Brent, Ben, come on. These things are sharp. <laughs> Good 
shot. I almost showed a little touch right there. Took a little, yeah. took a little off that a little, one. A little steam off of that oh, one. Yeah, pulled back a little bit. So Simonson run over in our opening match, trying to force a roll off McCune, giving him everything he wants and more. We welcome you back to New Jersey and FS1's live coverage of the PBA Players Championship presented by Snickers. Anthony Simonson, your 12 seed in a must win match as he trails Kevin McCune 1 0. Longtime PBA camera operator Tom Stone recently lost his wife, Michelle. And you see the sticker there of Michelle being passed around by friends and loved ones and making the trip around really the world with her and our thoughts go out to Stoney, Aaron, Eric, as well as they deal with this difficult situation. Tom, you were here rather, you'd be getting a big old hug from us right now, man. Yeah. We miss you, Stoney. Yep. Hearts. Simonson in the sixth. Off a strike. Make it two in a row. Yeah, good. And, and just to add to, uh, to Stoner's story, Several of our crew actually uh, made, made the trip out to the funeral, said it was beautiful, and uh, yeah, just, just heartbreaking now. All right, Simonson trying to claw his way back into this, up by seven, working on a double. Remember the open frame in the fourth frame is only blemish. McCune with an open frame in the first. On the left, the left, the 10. Just when you get settled in and you start to feel uh -huh. a little comfortable, that stupid 10 pin pops up. Remember McCune missed a 10 pin conversion earlier today. First yep. frame this game. Yeah, we almost take it for granted these guys are gonna drop it every time. Which is what Simonson does there. 67 of 71 throughout the event for Simonson and Again, all those great stats are brought to us by our good friends at Lane Talk. For more information, please visit lanetalk.com. McCune, a native of Munster, Indiana, about 30 minutes outside of Chicago. Beat Zach Tackett in the round of 12 and the upset of the year, taking care of EJ Tackett, the number one seed in the round of eight. The late kick there of the 10 to make things simpler. Well, something I didn't think I would see because of his excessive ball speed, as you see, 22.5 is early hook, but he definitely had it on this shot right here. That urethane ball stood up at his toes and went high. So we move to the eight. Six pins separating McCune and Simonson. Darlington race action tomorrow here on FS1. Coverage starts at 3 Eastern. with the ball rep. Well, he said I threw that pretty good. He's referring to the shot on the right lane. And that's never a good sign when you think you threw it really well and the ball hooks early. So that means that urethane bowling ball on that surface has torn up the front part of the lane. He'll have to move off of it. Simonson just 26 years old, already five major titles, trying to make it six this weekend. And oh my goodness, dancing with that gutter again. And he's got some heavy lifting to do here. Just an errant shot for Simonson as he gets it wide of target and he pays for it. Missed the two, got the four, left the 10 and another open frame. We're going to do a 3D comparison of the two players on the Weber pattern. The longer the two patterns, Simonson, the red ball, 
McCune, the blue ball, and what a difference. 17 boards at the laydown is Kevin McCune. That's how, that's how much farther left he is than Simonson. 14 at the arrows and five at the break point. And you can see those numbers right here. Left lane, strike, Simonson. Well, that's a big shot, too, because he keeps his hopes alive, even though he can't shut out McCune. But his max score, you can see right there, 218. And he's going to make McCune earn it. Simonson, 218 if he strikes out in the 10th. If Kevin McCune goes spare, strike, spare, he'll shoot 207. speed, right? Check out this speed. It's the fastest one I've seen by Kevin McKinnon. I was going to say, I don't think he's hit 23 miles per hour yet. I haven't he's seen been it. dancing with it. Yeah. That was a confident shot from a young man who yeah. does not have a lot of time on the tour. He moved the board left on that right lane and probably threw it harder to make sure he got it through the front part of the lane. So striking six for the win. Six pins and point two goes to McCune and he moves on to the finals. Eight will be enough. Wow. The satisfying moment of the match sponsored by Snickers. Nothing satisfies like a Snickers. Nothing satisfies like moving on to your first ever major title appearance. And he cleans things up as well. Kevin McCune, the unheralded nine seed, already upset EJ Tackett, takes down another legend this season on the PBA Tour, rolls Anthony Simonson two points to zero. And by the way, the two best games of McCune's time here at the Players' Championship today, 227 yeah. and a 225 as Simonson rolls out. So we will see Kevin McCune tomorrow live on Fox. Coverage starts at 1 Eastern. Anthony Simonson upset, waves goodbye. Stay here, man. Fifty-six pin win, and then a thirty-one pin victory. Kimberly Pressler standing by with our winner. Kevin, you just took out two of the hottest players on the PBA Tour. Describe this moment. Uh, it's obviously a great moment, and I mean, they're two of the best ever to do this. And I mean, you can see by the years both of them are having. I mean, I'm just trying to live in the moment and not get too overexcited, but. Who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? Well, tomorrow you're going into this. You said at the top of the show that winning for three generations is why you are out here. How do you keep this momentum going in your first major title? I'm just going to keep with the game plan and hit the pocket, and whoever strikes more is going to win. So, Congratulations on this win. Thank you. Make it simple, my friend. Make it simple. Kevin McCune, your nine seed in front of Pops, in front of Mom moves on third generation pba pro and kevin mccune trying to win another pba title for the mccune family so that one is done semifinal number two coming your way next jacob buttruff your two seed from tempe arizona set to take on six seed the real deal bill o'neill Let's take a look at the major champions from this season. Jason Belmonte at the TOC, EJ Tackett winning the U.S. Open and the Green Jacket.
Anthony Simonson, who was just eliminated here, able to defend his crown at the USBC Masters. And then some others will be joining those major winners coming up next week in Jupiter, Florida from Bolero there as we get ready for the PBA Super Slam Cup presented by Bolero. He's Randy Peterson. I'm Rob Stone. And you know this better than just about anybody here. You spend a lot of time on the lanes with your opposition. Yeah. Maybe too much time. Sometimes there's match play and then there's competition and you're constantly staring at somebody. Yeah, Odds are. We, we used to say it was your second wife. Oh, well, yeah, second wife. Maybe sometimes the third wife uh, because the second wife has to move on because friction does happen here on the lanes and on the other side of the lanes. That is the subject of this week's pressing questions presented by Go Bowling. Kimberly Bressler with some friction on the lanes. During a competition, who is someone that you do not want to cross on the lanes with? Like who I want to bowl with? Who you don't want to bowl with. Oh, anybody that's beaten me. Whoever is slow, stay away from me. I'd probably have to say Belmo. You know, uh, just because it's a little intimidating, I try and get caught trying to hook it as much as him, which I cannot do. He's got a little more rev rate than me. And, uh, you know, it just sucks to get beat all the time if he bowls on your pair. So, uh, sorry, Belmo, I don't want to bowl with you. Who is someone that you want to cross with? Um, Sean Rash. Yeah, there's some guys that I definitely prefer to bowl with because of how we break the lanes down. Um, and Sean Rash is a guy that I enjoy bowling with because we are really good at breaking the lanes down in the same part. How much would it surprise you if I told you that two separate athletes said that they actually would like to cross with you? In our sport? Yeah. Oh, I'm shocked. Chris, in a week like this where you guys are super busy, who do you not want to cross with? Mmm. Who complains the most? Kyle, who is someone that you do not want to cross with during an event? Oh, I mean, I'm not too picky, but I think Prather is one of them. Probably uh, like Kyle Sherman, uh, mainly because he thinks he's really funny and then he tries to like joke a little bit whenever we're bowling and stuff, but ultimately he's just not a funny dude. He just always thinks he's so funny with every joke. Would you be shocked to hear that Chris actually said the same about you? I would, because Chris has no sense of humor. So, yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. I like a little serve and volley <laughs> back good. and forth between those guys. Who did you like to match up with? I, I loved cross with my uh, my old tour roommate, Tom Kreitz, and we were doubles partners together. But we, uh, we matched up pretty well. We could read the lanes off of one another. And if he had a bad day, he didn't, he didn't spaz out. <laughs> he was a very low-key guy, and, and so we always enjoyed crossing with each yeah, other. For me, as long as I'm not crossing with Tom Doherty, I'm fine <laughs> any day on the lane. Semi-final number two is set to come up here on, TD. on FS1. Uh, Bill O'Neill, the real deal, the Philly Billy, if you will, taking on two seed Jacob Buttruff. And Billy O's been putting up some big numbers. Yeah, he really has. He started, uh, you know, last weekend uh, with a 253 game, but I think his strategy really paid off, right? He came in with a game plan. He was going to use your thing on the right lane. He used reactive on the left lane. He had a really good picture, and his execution was fantastic. The thing about Jacob Buttruff, the lone lefty remaining. Yeah, and that typically can be a scary thing, right? And Jacob it can strike with the best of them out on this tour. He has the high game in these finals at 278. And when Butters has a look, and he's the only one out on that side, he's awfully tough to handle. So the winner of this one to move on to our finals tomorrow, Kevin McCune, your surprising nine seed, waiting the winner of Buttruff and O'Neill in our opening match in semifinal number two. Coming your way next year on FS1, Jacob Buttruff, according to Fox Bet, a slight favorite over the real deal, Bill O'Neill. The on-lane graphics you see including the oil patterns which are projected on today's lanes courtesy of our great friends at Clutch Bowling. We welcome you back to our live coverage of the 2023 PBA Players Championship. Now, this is seen just moments ago on your right PBA Commissioner Tom Clark on your left Anthony Simonson and I went to go find Anthony since he lost 
He's been by the commissioner's side the entire time, through the commercial break, through our on-camera, through the next commercial break, and they just shook hands. Anthony always seems to have some things to say. You know, I don't mean that in a bad way. It just He's... I call him beautiful mind. He's, mm -hmm. he's always processing and, and thinking, and, and I think that's what makes him such a great bowler as well. You know, when he's trying to create shapes, he doesn't think about how to physically do it. He sees the motion, he sees the shape, and then he just throws it. Yeah, McCune swept Simonson out of this one, so McCune off to the final. Up next, semifinal number two, O'Neill versus Buttriff. Kimberly standing by with our two semifinalists. Thanks, Rob. So, Bill, in your own words, up until about two weeks ago, you yeah. said that you were struggling this season, but then something changed for you. What was that? Yeah, I was trying to use 14-pound balls uh, the first part of the season. I was trying to get my rev rate a little higher to keep up with the, with the EJs and the Belmos of the world, and um, uh, it did. It just made my ball hook really early, and uh, it didn't work, and I went back to 15, and uh, things have been good ever since. Well, you're back here, and you have that hometown crowd behind you cheering. Does it, does it add to the pressure of being out here with them here? Uh, I'm, bowling for, I'm bowling for a major championship. Doesn't matter if, if there's nobody here or my entire family. Pressure's all the same. And uh, you know, I'm just going to go out and do my thing. Well, good luck to you. you. And Jacob, you know, it is no secret how close you and your mom are. She unfortunately passed three years ago. You even dedicated your World Series of Bowling win to her this year. Mother's Day is tomorrow. So how much are you using that as inspiration to take this win over Bill today? Uh, it's just, it's an amazing feeling. And um, the last time I, I bowled really good on Mother's Day before, so I think that this win, or just in general, it, it just, it would be a, a heartwarming moment. And I, I can't thank anybody, everybody that supported me to get to where I'm at today. All right, good luck to you. Let's thank you. Jacob, such a nice, warm, young, caring individual, 28 years old, eight years on the tour, eight tour titles, one majors. You look at our tail of the tape, and Billy Ole, now 41. Getting a little long in the tooth? Mm, you said it, not me, my friend. No, I was asking. Oh, that was a question. Yeah. <laughs> that was a statement. Didn't you hear the, eh, <laughs> on the end there? Oh, regardless, I'm not going there. I love Billy O. I was so happy to talk to him this week. It's, yeah. been, it's been a while. You know, that was one of the kind of the hard questions I had asked him. Like, it's been a while since you've won here. Yeah. Uh, and he says, I'm okay with it because he's been competing at such a high level consistently. And leaves a 10 right there, you know. Top 10 in points back in 21, has hung around in the majors. And his big line, and I love this, you know, winning is really hard out here. We yeah. overlook that sometimes, Randy. Yeah, no, he, and he's right. And, and I think uh, to Bill's credit, he works so hard to keep up in the power game. He's just, just a, an old soul with a throwback style and that medium rev rate. And he does and tries and fights. and. And does whatever he can physically to, to keep up and keep pace. And, you know, he was really excited to see you. I saw the man hug you guys gave each other. <laughs> Me, on the other hand, uh, not so much. Not so much. Yeah. Well, Jacob Buttruff is, is happy to see anybody. <laughs> oh, he's not going to be happy to see that leave. Three, nine, three, seven, nine. Good luck with that. Not sure I've ever seen this converted for a left-hander. Yeah, can he put, can he roll righty on this one? Uh, Go like a little reverse, like Simonson can do sometimes. I've never seen him do that. He's not going to try it. Open frame to start. Now, we have seen more open frames today than I can remember really on any telecast. Uh, Simonson, I think, had five. Purple Hammer. Gets a lot of use uh, on the tour. Points. It does. There you go, Jacob. I like what he's doing with his hair today. I don't, I don't know if it's gel or, it's, or if it's a cow leg. You see how he's got that little, that little side thing yeah, going? For me, that's just sleeping funny on the plane. That's how I stagger off an airport. See it? Look yeah. at it. Yeah, looks good. All right, good shot here by Jacob Butcher. Remember, the players coming on after our last match get eight shots. Now, they get eight shots wherever they want. You could take six on one lane and two on the other, but it's eight total. O'Neal on the right. Curls that one in and left the 10. So back to back leaves of the 10. So, so obviously, Robin, in your absence, nothing has changed. The 10 still Correct. is a miserable 
pin. Yes. Remember last time we saw O'Neill, he was using urethane on the right lane. Not the case today. He's going with reactive resin. That's a Black Widow 2.0 on the right lane and a mindset on the left. Beat Don Barrett in the round leading into the round of eight where he took care of Matthew Russo. a strike. First one for Billy O. Great shot here by Bill O'Neill on that left lane. Hall of Fame eligible, 13 titles, two majors. Talk about seasons. How about that 2020 season when he won the Players' Championship, this event, and the Tour Finals? Buttruff leaving the seven. He'll be on the ballot in 2025, I believe. No-brainer. Mm-hmm. So Buttruff, open frame in the first, strike in the second, and trying to get a spare here in the third. Whoa! <laughs> Held on! The most unorthodox approach you will ever see. Yeah, it really is. Center. I still can't get used to it. What do they call it? Like the penguin? <laughs> I, think, I think so. That's pretty good. Well, he gets all that power because of the way he's able to roll his wrist up underneath it. Look at that. And then the follow through going to the right of his head. But right now his bar reaction is in question. So back to back nine spares for Jacob. He takes a seat. O'Neill up to close out the fourth. Nobody's really taken hold of this opening match yet in our race to two points. But I like O'Neill because he went back to back 10 pins and then the solid strike in the third, which tells me that he's pretty well lined up and his execution's good. Finished fourth this week down in Delaware at the doubles championship with his partner, Jason Belmonte. Who? Belmo. That's the guy. Neither yet to get the house going here yet. All right, McCune got it with that power and that velocity and those RPMs and the upset wins. Sweeping Simonson. Here, O'Neill and Buttruff trying to get some momentum. O'Neill remains clean, though. His third nine spare. He struck in the third. And Randy? Yeah. I'd like to welcome you to the Beer Frame, sponsored by Paps Blue Ribbon of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ask for the original and please drink responsibly. Welcome to the PBR Beer Frame. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, always good to have you here. Mm -hmm. O'Neill's only strike thus far coming on this left lane. And yeah, there's another strike on the left. Well, now. Check out these numbers here. Uh, quite a bit right than the last shot he threw on that lane in the third frame. And it gets back to the pocket. That's a good sign. You know, mm -hmm. the key is all, you, you're always trying to, to find, look at this. Well, he's got the crew over there. there, his right shoulder. Look at, they're right there in this shot too. He's, he's doing his best to not notice him. Butcher on the right lane gets a strike, his second. What I was going to say or finish about O'Neill and with all the players is you try to create mistake room, right? So you're looking at the second arrow, let's say, and, and then you, you try to figure out, well, if I hit the ninth board, which is just a board right of second arrow, or if I hit inside a second arrow, will my ball still do the same thing? 
And that's what all the players are trying to do is just expand that zone, that area. Jeez, Jacob. Jacob also with a top five finish this week at the doubles down in Delaware. Two, four, seven, eight. Yeah, and the, the, the issue is the back pin, the eight pin. He's made it all five times he faced it here at this tournament. Covers the eight, gets the spare. I think it's very interesting early on that Jacob Buttroff is actually using urethane instead of reactive resin on that left lane. And Jacob walked away with that two-hand motion, pushing down, calm, calm. We're all right, but it's Bill O'Neill with the lead in our opening match of our second semifinal. O'Neill, Buttroff, wrap it up, next. All right, during the commercial break, Bill O'Neill's wife, Christy, daughter, Avery, enjoying themselves. Right, poor Bill sitting here trying to, trying to do his job, and the rest of the crew's got the pom-poms out, dancing to the music, having a good old time. Bill is, yes, zen, happy place, calmness. I mean, he's telling me yesterday, he's like, I try not to find them in the crowd. Right. I don't want to see them. You can't miss them. They're right next to you. And when in doubt, just look for the guys with the Phillies hats. And you know you found the Bill O'Neill crew. So, Billy O, we love you. His, uh, Bill's brother Todd is there. Son Gavin. Told numerous times, I'm sure, on the short drive up here, be quiet while Dad is bowling. And then let it out. You know, he keeps giving that right lane the stink eye, and before the 3 6, it was a ring and 10 pin. Quick shout out to Bill's dad, Bill Sr. Tried to make it today. Feeling a little under the weather, and we send our best to Mr. O'Neill. Hey, let's hope he can make it tomorrow, yeah. should Bill advance. Good cleanup, Bill. So Neil remains clean. Remember, Buttriff an open frame in the first. 11 pins separating these two in the race 2-2. Two -two. This is the opening match of the second semifinal today here on FS1. Earlier, Kevin McCune swept the John McEnroe of the PBA, Anthony Simonson, two points to zero. John McEnroe. John McEnroe. I mean that as a compliment. O'Neal. Oh, that left lane is going a little bit better than the right lane. That's three straight strikes on the left. And Team O'Neal cheering on Philly Billy. It's like a birthday party over there, doesn't it? It really does. Buttriff down 11. Oh, it's kind of a thud. No pop, no bang. And you look at the numbers, and the numbers look pretty good, don't yeah. they? Uh, and the ball goes high. And again, either a bat out of his hand or early hook. The ball reading too early and going high. And another open frame. One in the first and another here in the seventh. Jacob in big trouble. Registration for the inaugural 2023 PBA LBC National Championships, Randy. It's now open to all bowlers of all skill levels from all centers this summer in beautiful Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where you can do a little side trip to a certain bowling center. You can compete in singles as well as optional doubles and team events. Even combine your scores with the pros. Enter today at PBA.com. In the eighth, come on, seven pin. Boatload of money up for grabs in that event. Boatload, you say? Lots. Lots. Thousands cool. and thousands of dollars. Might need to reschedule my summer. You want to pull doubles together? I mean, well, I think only if you like losing money would you want to be my partner. <laughs> I'll get us a backer. Yeah, oh, we got it. I got a guy. I got a guy. I know a, pla I know a place where I'm going to go warm up in Milwaukee, I'll tell you that, on multiple levels. Shout out to our friends at the Holler House. 
I wonder how long Jacob Buttrup's going to stay in the urethane ball on the left lane. What would your guess be? I would, I would say he's going to change the next time he's up on that lane, which would be in the 10th frame. On the right lane, which has been tough for O'Neill, gets his first strike there and his first double. And the lead extends to 34. Hey, Rob, you like 3D? I do. Check this out. This is how O'Neill is playing the two different patterns. So the Weber pattern is a longer pattern. That's the red ball. He's going much straighter. The shorter pattern, Carter. Well, he's using a lot more angle. Two different bowling balls, and you can see the difference in numbers. I looked at that for a second. I was like, Pete Weber's taking on Don Carter. This is going to be an amazing match. <laughs> I don't think it's the one I'm commentating on. Well, nope. well Rob, uh, yeah. I don't know what you're doing. I love it. O'Neal in the ninth. That's three in a row. He's won big tournaments like this before, and it's been a couple of years for Bill O'Neill, but I'll tell you what, it's like riding a bike. You never, you never forget that feeling, and you never forget how. Yeah, the O'Neill camp knowing that the hammer has been put down. Three in a row. Did you see his brother Todd pop up there? Child on lap and springs up at the release. He knew it as well. Buttruff in big trouble here in our opening match. Nice strike. Really needed it. It had been spare, open, spare. Sixth, seventh, and eighth frame until that strike in the ninth for Buttruff. Down 44. Yeah, just a little adjustment on the right lane for Jacob. But again, I anticipate a ball change on the left lane. Sure enough, there it is. There He's it going is. to reactive. Mindset. Oh, well, oh. has his mindset changed with that ball change? <laughs> tell you what his mindset is right now. Is he, he looks upstairs and... He's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, I get that I'm not going to win game one, but you got to kick me right in the stomach. Uh -huh. Have Good. you ever been kicked in the stomach before? Several times. One more shot for Jacob. O'Neill has already won our opening point. Race to two points. These two will meet again next. And should Buttruff get the win, we'll have a roll off. So that's a got, pretty good way to end it. He's got to feel pretty good about this now, right? I mean, uh, the, the right lane, I'm, I don't know. Maybe it's okay. But I think he feels pretty good about his chances on the left lane now. Well, he did get that strike on that right lane in the ninth. I heard somebody yelling in the crowd and it reminded me that's what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> so now O'Neill is kind of sliding. Are you sliding our way? Yeah, he's having a conversation here. Yeah, new ball brought in. Who brought that in? I think that was Mike Wolf. It was Wolfie. Same kind of ball, different layout. Black Widow 2.0. It's going to try to look at a little different shape on that right lane. You can see the lines on, on the ball, the yellow, uh, or the yellow grease pencil. That ball was just drilled, like today. Worked pretty the, well. At the latest, that ball was drilled yesterday. He hasn't thrown a lot of shots with it. Let's that one again. Huh? All right, so O'Neill has five strikes in a row here. We've got ourselves a little uh, six-pack alert, courtesy of our great friends at Paps Blue Ribbon. Does he have another for us? O'Neal with the 1-0 lead in our race to two points. 
at the PBA Players Championship. O'Neal, a commanding 239-175 win. Can he get one more and move on to tomorrow's final? Let's jump back in the flashback machine, Randy. The 2020 PBA Players Championship. Wayne Webb's Columbus Bowl. The three seed Billy O took care of your top seed EJ Tackett by one pin, 233, 232 to win the title. This is his 12th career title, second career major win. In the stepladder finals, the Zen Master went through Chris Prather, Jason Belmonte, and Tackett to win the title. Billy O looking to get to tomorrow's championship showdown. We already know Kevin McCune will be there. Buttruff must win this. While we were gone, our good friend Anthony Simonson talking with uh, MMA announcer Ben Ben Davis right there. What do you think they're discussing? So, so Ben, I'm um, like, how can I strike Tom Clark? I don't want to fatally wound him, uh, but just something that he'll know. I mean, business. Something in the 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 did you do you? What was that? What's that part of the box? The jinju? The, you know what I'm talking about? Don't I have no you? idea what you're talking about. Not the jiu-jitsu, right in the. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Right in the solar plexus. I know what that is. Yeah, uh, that ju 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 Dude, whatever something. thing. Oh, I don't know. Somebody, somebody on the Twitter machine will yell at me yeah. and say it's this, you idiot. I'm dying to know. Yeah. I'll pick up my phone in the commercial break. By the way, can I fire up a hashtag today? Hashtag, Please? hashtag bowling mom. Fire us some uh, bowling mom pictures for our Mother's Day show tomorrow on Fox. Some of the good ones to try to get on. Excited for Mother's Day, and right now, Billy O looks like he's going to be celebrating Mother's Day here with us. I guarantee you that he did not want that shot all the way out to the one and a half board, but I guarantee you, Christy, for Mother's Day, will take a title. We'll take that major, we'll take that paycheck. Oh, she's just so, oh, look at her. She just pops. Such a beautiful smile. Love having Christy and her kids, Gavin Avery, with us. Bill's brother, Todd, here as well. Bill Sr., though, we want you. We want you here tomorrow, should your son move on. O'Neal. Messenger, get in your home! Back-to-back -back jacks for Billy O. Bill O'Neill using that extreme outside angle to his advantage. Head pin to the sidewall, just clobbers a 10. That's an MMA elbow to the head to drop down the 10 pin. And guess what? That 10 pin deserved everything he got. Buttruff matches it with a strike of his own. Nothing but strikes so far. You feel things ratcheted up just a little bit here in match two. I mean, I, I, I think that his execution has to be perfect in, in order to have any chance. Mindset on the left lane for Jacob Buttrip. Three for three is Butters. You know, he's had a very nice season, quietly a very nice season. Won a title. Scorpion. Yeah. In World, cha World Championship. Made the telecast there. Third on average, fifth on points. Another top 10 finish here. Oh, I got a Bill O'Neill nugget for you. Oh, I'm excited. You want to hear also, it? You also scared me with that. Uh, look at this. Six shots, six strikes. I'll tell you right after your promo. How's All that? Right. After a wild and heated race in Kansas, Randy, you know the NASCAR Cup Series is now in Darlington. It's throwback weekend at the Goodyear 400. See who will rise up and conquer the lady in black, which I assume is what they call Darlington. Yeah. Okay. The pre-race begins tomorrow, 1.30 Eastern. Engines fire at 3. All of it here on FS1, also on the Fox Sports app. All right, right out of this shot, I'm going to give you my Bill O'Neill nugget. Oh. Uh, Hates it, as he should. Big miss left. First time I laid eyes on Bill O'Neill. Many, many years ago, as an amateur, 
U.S. Open right here in oh, Carolina really? Lanes, and I believe he finished seventh. I'm trying to remember the first time I met Bill, but I was explaining to my, uh, my family who was in the car with me as I was calling Bill and get, going over my notes, and I was like, when I first joined, and this, I'm not trying to make this about me, but when I first joined the PBA, Bill was one of those rising stars. He yeah. was part of, like, what do we call him, the Rat Pack. Him, Fagan, Fagan, Belmo, mm -hmm. and they were the guys that were kind of newish, and I was newish. So I, I immediately latched onto these guys and had fun following them. And then as I was explaining to my son who's trying to get into the business, Bill hasn't won for a while. You know, Bill is getting, as you mentioned, you know, a little long in the tooth, and it's tough to have these conversations, these real-life conversations about, it's been three years since you won. You know, how are you handling it? You know, where are you career-wise right now? And Bill's, Bill's not going down without a fight, nor is Jacob Buttruff, who just dropped the hand bone here. Oh, perfect through the opening four, and there's O'Neal. And you know, talked about that gap. You know, he had that spare of the game sponsored by Guaranteed Rate earlier. O'Neal's not going to go without a fight. Where's Buttrick? How about that? Huh? A little Yahtzee to open up game number two here. And he's sitting on a six-pack alert as well. Game one, the Bill O'Neill camp is checking out Buttrick and his bar reaction. They're like, yeah, just what we wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, man, have things changed. So perfect on that right lane here in game two is O'Neal. Four strikes through five frames, had that seven spare in the fourth, and that's that's been the difference. Yep, just a bad shot on the left lane last time up, and he got it in and went through the nose, but this is a beauty here. Again, live coverage tomorrow over on Fox Sports of the Players' Championship. Kevin McCune waiting to find out who he will take on in our race to three points. O'Neal took match one and has given Buttrick everything he can handle here in match two. So it's now a 13 pin lead for Jacob Buttrick, who has been perfect through five frames. Five shots, five strikes in a must win match for Buttrick. We conclude Buttrick and O'Neal next. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Go Bowling. For friends and family fun, log on to GoBowling.com to find a center near you. By Guaranteed Rate, want to move fast? With Same Day Mortgage, you can go from application to approval in as fast as one day to get you closing on the home of your dreams in just 10 days. Learn more at Rate.com. And by Bolero, the number one place to bowl, party, and play with over 325 locations nationwide. Head to Bolero.com today to find a center near you. The PBA Players Championship will be determined tomorrow, live on Fox coverage starting at 1 Eastern. Your nine seed, Kevin McCune, will be there. Will he be taking on Bill O'Neill or Jacob Butra? Bill O'Neill with a 64 pin win in the opening match. But it's Buttruff currently up 13, and Buttruff has been perfect through five, which means we have a PAP six pack alert. If Jacob strikes here, he'll win a thousand bucks. Sponsored by Paps Blue Ribbon of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Please remember to drink responsibly. <laughs> Go for that six pack, baby! It's quite the comeback, huh? Mm -hmm. After opening up with 175. Had two open frames in the last match. And here's Jacob, perfect through six. Two open frames, no doubles. Seven in a row! I think I could say this now because he's not up, but uh, he's got seven in a row, and he's no stranger to bowling 300. He had two of them in this tournament. Looking for another one. 
like if, like if he was up right now, like going over the like if it was mm -hmm. during crossover, and I said that he he would miss. You know, what I mean, it's like the announcer's. Gotcha, first. gotcha, gotcha. You, you can't say it, but he's sitting. He's sitting now. By the way, O'Neal is not out of this. That's another strike for O'Neal. So that's six strikes and seven frames for O'Neal. It's only that seven spare in the fourth that is separating these two. By no means is this one over. Buttriff, though, perfect through seven. Like a good ground and pound MMA fight. Ooh, 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 yeah. No one's tapping out yet. Certainly not Bill O. Well, that's the soft 10, a little different than what he's been leave, or what he left in game one. And Bill O'Neill, his execution's been really, really good today. He's only missed the pocket twice, but you heard him say tip. He wanted it to come up the hill just a little bit stronger to get that corner pin out. Converts that one. Remains clean. And he takes a seat. Buttruff up for the eighth and the ninth. So Jacob has the first seven strikes toward dropping a perfect 300 game. Should he or any other player on today's show bowl a perfect game? Everyone in America can receive a free game of bowling courtesy of Go Bowling. To pre-register, visit GoBowling.com. Sign up for the Go Bowling Free America promotion. Dreaded jinx, courtesy of me. You're welcome, Jacob. Great run, perfect through seven, and left the seven in number eight. Has missed a few of these this tournament, but not there. Now, the Spare of the Game, sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Want to get moving fast? With same-day mortgage, you can go from application to approval in as little as one business day. Time to get your dream home crazy fast. Learn more at rate.com. Interesting to watch Jacob Butcher shoot seven pins now, where he used to throw it straight and hard and back his wrist out. He's not doing that. Left the seven again and leaving an opening for O'Neal. And again, you'll, you'll get a good look at what he's changed in his spare game. And it's the same motion as his strike ball. He goes to obviously a plastic ball that doesn't hook or curve at all, but he throws it like a strike ball. Still has his wrist up underneath it and just relies on a ball that doesn't hook. So after seven straight to open, it's a pair of nine spares for Buttruff. The deficit is 22, O'Neill working on a spare. Check out the max scores, 268 for Butters, 256 O'Neill. Buttruff must win to force a roll off. Number seven for O'Neill. Again, the, sorry, Rob, again, the theme strategy and execution. And right now it's just going to come down to executing. And executing on that left lane, which has been the more problematic of the two here in this match, at least. No problems on that shot. Two more to go for O'Neal. One at a time. Right over second arrow. Pretty straight, or at least much straighter on the longer pattern. 
the Dick Weber pattern. 45 feet, Bill O'Neill looking for a double here in the 10th and apply a little pressure to Buttruff. memory there for another strike, his third straight. The deficit at two. O'Neill burns one of his two re-racks. Those last numbers were staggering how close they were on top of one another for O'Neill. So a strike here will force Buttrev to mark in the 10th frame. We still have a possibility of a tie. A lot of different scenarios, depending on what O'Neill does right here with a fill shot. If he goes nine, spare nine, we have a tie. And it'll be a one ball roll off. If Jacob strikes and gets nine, Jacob Buttruff will win by one. Down go all 10. There was some soft resistance on that one. Bit inside a target and a uh, nice ball reaction there for Jacob Buttruff. Any type of mark here or nine in two shots, and we're going to a ninth and tenth frame roll off. seed, which is Buttruff, is going to choose the order. So O'Neill will start. Is he on the right or the left lane? Can you see Randy? He's going to start on the left lane, which is good for him. Right has been better for him so far. Finish on the right, just the opposite for Jacob. Obviously, has indicated that Bill O'Neill will open the match on the left lane. How about the turnaround for Buttruff? An 89-pin swing between game one and game two. Here we go. Two frames to see who moves on to tomorrow's title on Fox. Ninth and 10th frames. O'Neal up first on the left through the nose. Leaves the 3-6. Big miss left. Mm -hmm. Didn't like it. Had to have that. Buttruff can close him out now. He knows his, he knows that. Remember his last shot on this right lane to finish that last game. Six through the middle. Oh, 
10 there. Yeah, full rack attack for Jacob Budger on the right lane. Side of target, probably moved his feet a little bit right after that last shot, the last game. And this sets up perfectly in the one-two pocket. on this next shot, and for all intents and purposes, it is over. Butcher, since going to the reactive ball on that left lane last game, he only missed once. Remember, he was perfect through seven, and then gave O'Neill an opening. Was able to close it, though. And here he is, perfect here in our ninth and tenth frame roll-up. For the win. Look out. tells the story. Boy, that looked well inside a target, and what a break for Jacob Buttruff. It's all over but the shouting. Jacob Buttruff moves on to tomorrow's title showdown against Kevin McCune. This looked left, or excuse me, right the whole way, and it held on. Just enough to trip that six out late. Yeah. A little slump, and that's it for O'Neill. She had two open frames, but then you just came out swinging in the second match. What adjustments did you make? Uh, I was, I just didn't have a good ball reaction on the left line to start. Um, I tried to stick with a game plan, it didn't work out well, so I ended up making a ball change, went to the mindset on the left lane, and um, I just had to make my moves a lot more quicker. Uh, Bill Bold, phenomenal, so, you know, uh, and bowling as the hometown crowd is always, always nerve-wracking, so um, hats off to him. He bowled amazing to get here, so. I think I'm just gonna have to let the jitters go and get ready for tomorrow. Well, let's talk about the fact, since you did win that, you made sure this roll-off happened. Walk us through, from your point of view, what happened in it. Uh, I started off struggling, and I think that I had to, I had to figure out some way to, to, get, to get the ball rolling, because Bill's one of those guys that could strike with the best of them, so I think that I just had to be ahead of the move and uh, try to get, give you the best I got. Well, you are moving on to the finals tomorrow, and it's Mother's Day, and we talked about how important that was to you. Uh, your mom, if she was here, what would she say to you? Uh, just stay loose. <laughs> um, she's, she's always one of those people that just say, if you enjoy it then, and if you feel like you're confident in it, just have fun with it. And I think that's, she's bouncing up and down upstairs, so I think that's the, the best feeling on the planet. I'm sure she's absolutely proud of you. Congratulations, you move on to the finals. Yeah, Mom Bridget upstairs with a big smile on her face, just hours shy of Mother's Day. She knows her baby boy will be rolling for his second ever major title and ninth of his career. Your two seed, Jacob Buttriff, moving on past Bill O'Neill. And up next for him, the surprising nine seed, Kevin McCune. Our coverage tomorrow live, one Eastern here. Actually, over on Fox. So our coverage of the PBA Players Championship will pick it back up tomorrow at one on Fox, the PBA Players Championship presented by Snickers as it's been for the last couple weeks. And it'll be Kevin McCune, the nine seed versus that man, your two seed, Jacob Buttruff, as we crown our final major champ of the year. Coming up next here on FS1, American Flat Track, Ventura Short Track. For Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler, and our entire crew, I'm Rob Stone. Thanks for watching the PBA on FS1. Jacob Buttruff survives Bill O'Neill. He'll take on Kevin McCune, and one of them on Mother's Day will be a major winner. We will see you next on Fox at 1 Eastern Ventura Short Track Racing. Coming your way next here on FS1, Kevin McCune, the surprise winner in front of Mom and Pop. The nine seed from Munster, Indiana moves on, and he's got the lefty from Arizona. The two seed, Jacob Buttruff, 
tomorrow. It is the final of the PBA Players Championship presented by Snickers, and we'll see you at 1 on Fox.